this is um, active learning and um, I'd like you to be my partner in learning. This is a TESOL class. It's TESOL with Web Technologies. My name is Nellie Deutsch and I'm going to be giving this uh, live online class. It's going to be recorded and added to YouTube and it's on WizIQ. Yes, that's where I'm giving the class and that's how I'm recording it. I'm using Camtasia, but you can use Screencast-O-Matic or any other screencasting system. So we've got a few seconds to go. I'm going to check my audio device. That's audio and video. Make sure that I'm in. There I can see myself. Test the microphone to make sure that that's working as well. TESOL with Web Technologies is a way to teach online. To oh, make sure it's that's working. working as well. Teach online, fully online, face to face, or blended, which is a combination of face to face online. Hello and welcome. Welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Friday. And I'm wondering where you are and what the time is. So if you can add that in the chat box and we'll get started. This is Nellie Deutsch and it's a pleasure to be here. It's always nice to give live online classes because it allows me to relax from my other work. So in the UK, it's 5 p.m. Hello, Carl. And we've got Yemen, Huda, it's 7 o'clock, I presume uh, p.m., wouldn't be that early in the morning. And Samantha is from Thailand. Oh my gosh, it's really late, I'm so sorry. I am, hello Samantha. Oh, well, we'll have to get together. You'll have to email me. And we've got Len. Hello, Len. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. All right. And Maria, of course. Hello, Maria. Suhala. And I guess others will be joining us as we go. Of course, this is being recorded um, through WizIQ. And it's also recorded through Camtasia and will be on YouTube. Or Vimeo, if you like, for those of you who can't get... YouTube, uh, Vimeo. All right. So today's session is about TESOL with blogs and social networks. This is part of a course, and uh, the course is ongoing, of course. Uh, I'm giving four sessions one each week, but actually uh, it goes on, it never stops. So you're from Morocco and it's four o'clock in Morocco. And Leonardo, where are you today? And what time is it over there? And Maria, it's 1 p.m. in Rio. That's great. And I hope the weather is good. And Maria, so we've got Brazil, I think. Yes. Oh, so you're in the same place. Uh, okay, that's great. Maybe you guys can get together. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, not you. So where are you, Maria? Are, I, I get confused. Ah, Ecuador. That's right. Wow, I was confused. Sorry about that. All right, so today's session, as I said, is about TESOL with blogs and social networks. It should be networks. Um, and think about your favorite network and where you spend your time um, learning and teaching. Uh, Jason R. Levine, I don't know if you've heard of him, claims that he is a teacher on Facebook. He teaches, he has lots of students, and he does a lot of his teaching on Facebook. Len, I think you're in the same situation. 
um, in some way. And the question is, how? Today is going to be a very interactive class, even more interactive than usual. And I'd like to share the link to the course if I can find it. And if you can find it faster, that would be great. The link to the course to TESOL so that those who haven't joined, because these are public classes, only those who um, actually join the TESOL course are eligible for a certificate and they also get a free premium account for one year on WizIQ. Oh, you did that, Huda. Oh, no, you didn't. Here it is. But you did share the, uh, very good, the Google Docs. Thank you. So that's the uh, the course for those of you who haven't joined yet. And there's a question by Len, Leo, sorry, where can we watch the previous classes? Uh, you can watch them in the course, actually, okay, through WizIQ or through um, YouTube. But I'm not sure I've got YouTube open right now, but there's a channel for TESOL that I created on YouTube, so you can get it there. It's called TESOL, I believe. It's a place playlist on my channel. I get confused because I think that um, YouTube is really doing a lot of uh, major changes. I should have added that that is a social network because it is, in fact. Uh, so let's see, here's my TESOL. I see there's only one video there, so I guess I have to get organized. Or perhaps I've got two TESOL. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see if I've got two of them. I think I have two TESOL. Uh, playlists. One has one video and I think the other one should have more. In any case, yeah, here it is. It has seven videos, um, Leo, so you can actually um, view them. Just let me know if it works. If not, you can email me and I'll share the link with you. So I think this should work. That should be the playlist for the YouTube. Yes, Huda, go ahead. Please feel free to uh, to ask questions, add comments, anything that comes to mind. Everything you add to the chat is great. Can I pay by? Oh, I don't know because I don't deal with money, but you can find out through WizIQ. Oh, you don't have a visa. I think WizIQ has different ways of uh, paying But um, I don't know. I can find out for you. Send me an email and I'll find out for you. All right. There's a great um, article that I think you may find of interest that uh, is called Social Networking for Language Learners and Creating Meaningful Output with Web 2.0 Tools. This is by Robert Chartrand. And it just came out uh, in the uh, Knowledge Management and E-Learning in 2012. You might be interested in that. I'll share the link with you. But it's also in the courseware, and you'll be able to get it there. In fact, let's see how fast, since I know uh, Carl, Maria, and Leo are in the course. Let's see if you can find the link. And hello, Ida. If you can find the link to today's uh, PowerPoint presentation. It's actually public. Let's see if you're fast. And let's see who does it first, in fact. Okay, so are you ready? And let's see if I'm faster than you are. This is a public, uh, and you can download it. It's actually public. I think I, oh, Carl got it before I did. Very good, Carl. All right, that was fast. Okay, excellent, Carl. <laughs> okay, I appreciate that. There it is. You can download it and click on the image. Okay, this in fact is an image so that you can get the article. I think it's worth reading. It's not too long and it has some interesting uh, ideas that you might be able to use. All right, so today we're actually going to do the work. 
Okay, and this is a bit different that I believe in and I think that you may find uh, very useful. It's where the students do the work and they uh, gain a lot by doing the work because they get ownership, they get involved. And after all, learning is about them and it's not about the teacher, even though teachers tend to uh, try to be the center. <laughs> you know, but it's not really our job to be in the center. It's our job to um, get the students involved and working. Huda, if you feel lost, I have a few uh, YouTube videos, tutorials that I created to uh, help you get unlost. Okay, so I'll share that with you as well. All right. So um, we're going to watch a movie, a little uh, very brief, to get you started and thinking about your role as a student. And your role as a teacher, as opposed to uh, your role today. Okay, and um, if you would consider becoming a learner, in your class. Now, I didn't make a mistake. I actually said learner. Consider your position as a learner in your class. But your class, you are the teacher. Hello, Ishmael. But your position as a learner in your classroom. Okay, so I hope that wasn't too confusing. And I'm going to share this video to get us going here. All right, so this is the video. I hope everybody's able to get YouTube. Hello, I'm Carrie, spokesperson for American TESOL Institute. Today I'd like to thank all of our 2010-2011 graduates and would like to talk with you about being a teacher. Naturally, we are all teachers constantly influencing each other, and to dedicate your life to teaching is a great challenge. A teacher must be humble and make sacrifices for others in order to succeed. A teacher must create and nourish the dreams of their students. A teacher sees what makes each of their students unique and nurtures that uniqueness into a life path. A teacher gives of their knowledge freely, and most importantly, a teacher must admit to themselves what they really want from life. Because teaching is like climbing a mountain, and most all of us want to get to the top. American TESOL wants you to meet your potential, so today, I encourage you to teach with a big heart and to make it to the top of your mountain. There you will find what you really want from life and can take all that you deserve. Well, I'm able to um, hear the end of it. I mute my mic because I have a headset, Carl, so it's not really necessary. But I hope you're able to hear that. If not, you'll be able to get the uh, video recording by clicking Oh, you heard well by clicking on the video okay now the question is this what does it mean to teach okay think about it what does it mean for you to teach and how does learning come into it now she mentioned a few things what did she mention Okay, if you can think back, it was only about a minute long, a minute and something long. It wasn't a long video. Ah, okay, who the teacher has a big heart. Okay, anything else? Okay, teaching is passing knowledge. Give to others 
what I have learned, my skills, but at the same time, learn from my student. Did she mention that? Anything else? Carl, I hope you don't hear echoes. Do you still hear echoes? Oh, you didn't see it. All right, very good idea. Okay, I'm going to play it again. Only when video is playing. Okay, I'm going to play it again. All right, and this time I'll mute my mic to make sure that there are no echoes. Okay, here we go. Hello, I'm Carrie, spokesperson for American TESOL Institute. Today I'd like to thank all of our 2010-2011 graduates and would like to talk with you about being a teacher. Naturally, we are all teachers constantly influencing each other, and to dedicate your life to teaching is a great challenge. A teacher must be humble and make sacrifices for others in order to succeed. A teacher must create and nourish the dreams of their students. A teacher sees what makes each of their students unique and nurtures that uniqueness into a life path. A teacher gives of their knowledge freely and most importantly, a teacher must admit to themselves what they really want from life. Because teaching is like climbing a mountain and most all of us want to get to the top. American TESOL wants you to meet your potential so today I encourage you to teach with a big heart and to make it to the top of your mountain. There you will find what you really want from life and can take all that you deserve. Okay, you might be wondering why the only reason I chose the video is because of what you said about teachers. Um, so one of the things, climbing mountains, how's that connected? And how is life connected? Humble, giving knowledge freely and teach with a big heart. Okay. Um, mute, must nurture, uniqueness of each student, struggling, see what, what's struggling, Huda. Uh, see what makes students unique. Excellent, Ida. Anything else? Just ask. Oh, sorry, that's not connected. Um, consider students' needs. Okay, what about life? Um, she mentioned life path and climbing a mountain. And the question that she asked, what you have to ask yourself, what do you want from life? Have you ever thought of teaching as asking life questions like, what do you want from life? Enthusiasm, she didn't mention that, but that's what you want from life, Carl. You want enthusiasm. Okay, so what she mentioned was really important because teaching is almost like learning about life. And what do you want from life? Okay, what do you want from life? Because she mentioned goals. If you know what you want from life, that's teaching. It's finding out what you want from life. It's a life path. Maria says, climbing the mountain, reaching the top is what will open the path to your life. Exactly. That's the idea. Very good. And Lynn says, teaching is a career. One you have to build. The teacher is forever growing. That's the point. And I think she says it really, really well without stepping on anybody's toes, without making teachers, which is what sometimes happens to people who think they know better and, and they make teachers and other people feel uncomfortable. So she wasn't really telling you what you should do or think. She was just saying and giving her perspective on teaching as a life path. And I think that's really, really important. All right, so today we're going to um, actually not only learn about, but carry out a social uh, network task. And the task is 
through Google Drive. Now, Google Drive has become very, very social. How many of you use Google Drive? If you could just add in the chat box. It is a high perspective, Huda. Definitely. Okay, great. Samantha and Carl, I'm glad you do. And Maria does as well. Okay, if you don't use it as a teacher, you've probably used it as a student because I use it all the time. Oh, you do, Len, every day. That's amazing. And it's going to get better and better. There are lots of applications now, apps on Google Drive, and it's just improving. You know, it seems that Google is more interested in um, teaching or specifically in learning than um, any other organization. Okay, as opposed to say uh, Facebook, that is more social and less uh, interested in getting students and teachers to share information as such. All right, so I'm going to share a document with you that I created. Maybe some of you have it already, since you've got access to the uh, tutorial that I've shared. So there it is. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to screen share so I can take you there. Now, teachers, and not, you know, it's not so much teachers, I think, administrators, principals of schools uh, seem to think that a teacher should get paid for the number of words or the number of hours that the teacher actually spends in front of the students, which is really ridiculous. Okay, because it doesn't do very much. But that's the idea. The teachers are supposed to be uh, earning their living by doing things for the students instead of having the students do it themselves. Okay, that's the kind of misconception. Uh, let's see what's going on. It seems to be taking its time. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the screen sharing, you can go there. Now, we can use the comment box. And you can find it in two places. You can find it where it says insert on the Google Doc and also on the left. And you can also find it on the right. You can use both and see how they're different. They're not exactly the same, even though they both say uh, comment. And I'm gonna, going to uh, refresh my page so that uh, things work a bit better, I hope. Okay, I refresh my page. I think that um, my system needs a bit of cleaning. So let me try screen sharing again and see if it works a bit faster this time. Yes, uh, Len, if you understand how, uh, you can. Maybe you can, um, anybody not understand? Do my name appear? Don't see the color. Um, your name doesn't appear, Maria, because I think you're in as someone without a name. I'm trying to see why the screen sharing is not working. Okay, I'm going to go there and you'll be able to see this. Um, okay, so let's see. Maria, I see your name. I see that someone took off the... Um, oh, no, they didn't. Or did they? Oh, I see what happened here. Yeah, I, I see that I changed it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to add another. Oh, very good. That's great, Marie. I see that you've you've just uh, created a uh, comment box there. I'm just going to add something to make it easier for you. 
name. This is a blog actually. This is supposed to be for the blog and this is the social network. So Samantha you can add that let's see to the other side. You can also use a research uh, today. Yeah, we can write here in the chat. Hi, Maria. I hope everybody can see that. Yeah, I wanted to have a special section for the blog. For some reason, it's hyperlinked. I don't know why. Okay, it looks good. My screen sharing is still not working. Oh, it says it would perform better if I stop webcam. All right, so I stopped my webcam. Let's see if this works any better. Maria, you can add the Edutopia if you want under um, either blogs or social network under your name if you like. Hey, um. Yeah, Maria, thank you for adding. Um, if you can add the n a name of a blog, okay, I'll tell you what the, uh, the idea here is. The idea is to find blogs that use TESOL. In other words, teachers who teach through blogs. Okay, I know you're familiar with that. The only way to find this is to do a, a search. You can do a search actually on the uh, right here on the left where Maria opened see she opened a box And every time she adds a comment, there's a little uh, signal, a little uh, bell. The idea is this. Ah, be online. Okay, that's great, Samantha. So that's an example of a, uh, a TESOL blog. In other words, it's a blog where teachers teach. Okay, so TESOL blogs are teachers who use blogs to teach. Here's an example. And it's not TESOL. Okay, TESOL may be the wrong word. You may want to search for, say, something like um, teach English through blogs. Or maybe you know people who teach English. Or maybe you do. Maybe you teach English through blogs. There's also information on teaching through blogs, using blogs to teach English. 
you have to be careful that you're not getting uh, businesses. You don't want to uh, read about businesses and you have to be careful because you don't want your students to read about businesses either. I found something that you may find interesting, a blog. But it, it has job search. See, there are a lot of blogs that um, were set up to make money, not to teach English, but just to make money. And you don't want those blogs. Sometimes it's very hard, in fact, to tell the difference between a blog that's just trying to make money and a blog, I see my, it's not working, and a blog that's uh, truly teaching English through the blog. So what I'm interested in uh, are blogs, actually, that teach English. Teachers who use blogs with their students. And most of these teachers want other teachers to bring their students so that everybody can interact on the blog. Some of these blogs are on Edu, Edu blog. I don't know if you've heard of Edu blog. Yes, Maria, those may have some teachers on them. Or oh, you have an Edu blog. Excellent. And there are also some wikis, like on wiki spaces, where teachers use that to teach English. And the idea now is for you to try to discover those blogs. I think Doris Molero has a blog too uh, for her students. She does a wonderful job. I think she calls it EFL Center. Here I found it. I'll share this is an example of how a teacher uses blogs with her uh, students at her university. Her students are only supposed to actually, she's from Venezuela, her students are all, only supposed to use, um, only supposed to learn how to read, but she makes um, her students learn about the language and use the language. So Huda, you found one? Oh, you just found EduBlogs. No, I meant specific teachers who use blogs to teach. So there's one, I think you'll find it interesting, by Doris Molero. It's called Doris 3. Oh, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised, uh, Leo. But it's usually teachers who know one another that interact. And students love it. Students want other students to interact, not only from their classroom, from outside the classroom. I'm trying to um, see if I can screen share. I don't give up that easily. So let me know if you've taken a look at Doris's blog. They're Spanish students. Oh, not only that, Maria, she also teaches in a regular blog, not just, um, okay, and there are other teachers who do the same. Okay, so let's see, I, 
I can share it with you, but I'm going to go to uh, see how it's going. All right, so it's very no blogs yet. Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult to find teachers. Uh, some of them are on Facebook, but I think Doris's blog. Um, yeah, she right now this is the one that where she uses uh, Second Life, but she's got others. If you go down um, to the past, okay, into her previous. Um, blogs you'll see that in the past she didn't use uh, second life she simply used the blog but it doesn't matter whether you use second life or what um, the idea of course is to engage your students in blogs and i think she does a wonderful job another teacher is arena carla arena Let's see if you can find hers, Carla Arena. Uh, she calls it the collab blog. Here, I'll share it with you. Collab blogatorium. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's also um, here. I'll get it for you. Carla also does. Uh, by the way, with Carla and. Uh, Doris have in common. What Carla and Doris have in common, that's right, is that they're both uh, webheads. <laughs> and uh, and that's how I know because I'm also a webhead. Uh, Marie, I think you are too. So there it is. That's Carla's. You might want to put that. Can you add that on the blog? Um, Leo, you can add Carla's name and that's her uh, blog. Oh, you are you on you donation in Second Life. Oh, also with the webheads. Okay, so for those of you, Carl, if you're not familiar with the webheads, you may want to join the webheads. Uh, Van Stevens started it in 2000, I think. Webheads in action. And uh, Van Stevens. Um, it's not as active as it used to be. Right now, um, But there's a lot of information there. We used to have more meetings, and um, but now we meet less often. There's um, okay, webheads in action. Yeah, it's been put in twice. Thank you, Maria. Hello, Harmon, and welcome. Welcome to uh, today's class. And uh, if you don't know what we're doing, we're working on a document and trying to fill it in. Uh, this, there we go. So I can add that to. Um, there it is. There's a problem with my screen sharing, so I can't release. But maybe Carl, Carl, maybe I can give you um, the tools, and you can do the screen sharing by going into the documents since I can't seem to be able to do it. There it is, Carl. Carl, can you help out? Okay. Thank you. That would be great. So we can have that in the recordings as well. Yeah, your blog is great, except for the fact that Facebook. they charge money. Yeah. Do you know where you know where it is? Yeah, if you could just uh, screen share, go into the screen share and screen share the um, the Google document. Okay. I don't know. I'm on a Safari and a Mac, and for some reason, it's not working for me. 
Oh, is it working for you? Uh, oh, it's not. It's not. Maybe it won't no, work. Require, hmm. Requires Java one point six or above. Oh, then maybe that's uh, my pro. Are you on a Mac? No, PC. PC. So I thought it might be better on a PC, but apparently it's not. But you know what? Maybe it's worthwhile trying uh, Firefox. I can, maybe. I can quickly install the. the you mean you've Java, never used it? Java. Carl, you've never used it before. I've used uh, I've used screen sharing. Yes, I've, I've I've screen shared before. I'm sure I have. Yes, yeah, so I wonder why it's asking you to um, upgrade. Uh, All right, you know what I could do though. I I could. Well, I don't want to try Firefox, and then I would just um, have to leave the class. But you don't have to pay money, Maria, um, for EduBlog. You can get blogs for free, so really it's not necessary to um, pay money. Len, are you able to maybe screen share? Maybe I can let Len do it, Carl, and I won't bother you because um, you don't want to upload anything right now. Len, do you, do you want to try screen sharing? Have you screen shared on WizIQ before? Yeah, I know. I know what you mean, Maria. Okay, so let me give you, um, I'll give you the tools so you can screen share. Anyways, I want to try out your system, see if it's working better today since... Um... Okay, Len, I've given you um, the tools. There we go. Now we can hear you. And thank you for screen share. Just the... Um, the there it is. Unless there's a problem and it's not my end, there could be that there's a problem with it right now. In that case, uh, it's not going to work for anybody, but it's worth testing just to make sure. Ah, screen share. Do you mean screen share on WizIQ or is it working, Len? I think it's not working for anybody. Yeah, I think it's not working. Right, Len? There's a problem with it. Okay, so it's not my end. At least I know that. <laughs> okay. Hello, Huda. It's, uh, so it's not... There's a problem, I guess, somewhere else. Okay, so no problem. Um, if it's not only my, if it's, so it's not my end. All right, so I'm going to, you'll be able to see this in any case. Let's see how it's going here on the Google Docs. I see that, um, Carl, you can add, um, or Len added maybe. Len, did you add um, Arena? Carla Arena, I'll add that. It's Carla Arena, and it's called Coloc. Let's see if I can add that. There it is. It's called Coloc. Collaborium. I don't know why she would choose such a difficult name. I can hardly pronounce it. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to add it to the um, to the document for Carl. Okay, Carl, there it is. Um, that's a really good, and you can in fact contact Carla. She's got some really good ideas. Oh, you found something. Laura. Very good. Okay, so there's Carla. Okay, excellent. And you've got your Facebook group. Very good. Len, you also have your Facebook. Excellent. Okay, we're looking for some more blogs. I see Samantha has Enjoy English blog spot. That looks interesting. Let's see what that's about. Enjoy learning English. Great. But these are, this is looks like it's uh, Cambridge or something more serious. Okay, generally teachers have it and teachers have less coverage, so it's harder to... Uh, Find teachers.
and I see that uh, I'm having problems coming back into class for some reason. Looks like I'm having a lot of problems. I hope you can hear me because I'm currently um, not being able to see the class. So let's see what happens. There may be uh, problems. I'm completely out of the class. I can't come in, so I hope that um, you're working on the um, on the document, and uh, we should be able to uh, reconnect. I hope. Okay, I'm trying to reconnect. Oh, you heard me? Good, because I was completely out. Um, I had to refresh the page. And um, apparently my connection is really All right. Um, all right. So you've, you've done a bit of the work. So now it's your turn to reflect. So uh, if you could um, add in the chat... Yes, I did. <laughs> I'm back, though. If you could add in the chat, um, how was your experiences with filling in the form? How did it feel? Okay, just a few words on how it felt. Easy. That's great, Carl. I thought you would say that it was difficult because you had a hard time uh, maybe finding a teacher's blog. A teacher that uses blogs with her students. Actually, there's a British call it an organization in United Kingdom. It's called Quadro uh, Quadro Blogs, and I don't know if you're familiar with it. Where um, they actually connect teachers from around the globe and their students on one blog. It's a great project. I'll try to uh, get hold of it for you. And it's doing really well. There are a lot of schools from around the globe. And Maria says, not difficult, but must have time. Yes. You can't do this in a live online class. You have to work afterwards. Um, Samantha is impressed with the form filling. She likes how interactive it is. Um, and difficult to find. Exactly. It is difficult. And I think that's a shame. I think the teachers need to actually do a lot more marketing not for the money as marketing sounds like money it's not money but it's to get and connect with other teachers okay and that's where facebook twitter scoop it pinterest and i don't know if you use any other social networks come in you need to share your blogs and not feel that you're marketing or trying to make money and that's what Doris does, and that's what Carla does, and that's what Leo does, right, Leo? You need to share what you do for the sake of your students because it's a lot more fun and engaging to have lots of schools and lots of teachers connected on their blogs. Okay, so don't feel bad about Facebook, Twitter. Do a lot of tweets. In fact, you might want to get a hashtag so that you can connect with other teachers. All you need to do is add that sign to a tag and then connect. I know that there are a few, there is a TESOL um, hashtag 
And that's how you do it. You simply go to Twitter, you add hashtag TESOL, and you write and you share your uh, blog. And that's how you get things going. That's how easy it is, Carl. Okay, so you just, you can do it right now. Go to Twitter, share this, uh, this class, and add the hashtag at TESOL. That's all. And you might want to have a hashtag for everything that you do, okay, for your blog, for your uh, Facebook page. Okay, for example, I have uh, a few hashtags. The current hashtag that I use now is for the Moodle MOOC. So if you want to get hold of me, all you need to do is use that hashtag. Another way of getting hold of me and sharing your blogs and your blog posts is to go like that, at Nelly Muller. If you do that, I will get everything that you send. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake. It should be Nelly Muller with an R at the end. Sorry about that. Okay, there it is. So all you need to do is write your, uh, your Twitter and add at Nelly Muller, and I'll get everything that you send. Everything. And that's how it's done. Okay, that's how we share things through Twitter. Next, Scoop It. You could also have Scoop It on your um, desktop and share it. And of course, Pinterest. But I think the best way to share is through Facebook and Twitter because that's where people are. Even Scoop It and Pinterest have Twitter and Facebook on them. So Len, what you can do is you can simply twit that link to me by adding me as Nellie, as I said, Nellie Muller. Okay, that's my maiden name, by the way. And then I'll get everything. That's a sure way of getting hold of me. It's even better than looking for my uh, Gmail or my email account. There's nothing like a tweet. Okay. Uh, Doris's husband died, Maria. Um, it's really sad. He, he's been sick for a while. So yes, that's what you'll find on Doris's Facebook. Yeah. So if you know Doris, um, yes, you can send your condolences on her Facebook page. Doris and I have been very close friends for many, many years, so um, um, it's, it's a tragedy. All right, so any questions about learning, TESOL with blogs and social networks. So TESOL, first of all, is about getting a blog together and then marketing. <laughs> I call it marketing because that's what it is or sharing it on social networks, because that's what you need to do. Now, I have a few questions for you. What kind of teacher? Remember at the beginning I asked you, what is teaching? Now I'm going to ask you, what kind of teacher would you like to be? Is this the kind of teacher you would like to be? Well, what kind of teacher is this? The kids are really cute. But what kind of teacher is this? Or what kind of teaching is this? A teacher who learns from the students. Okay, Len. Uh, interactive. Where is the teacher? Is the teacher on the computer? Because notice this is not at home. This is in a computer lab. It could be blended. Very good, Samantha, but it, because it's in the classroom. One part is definitely in the classroom. This kind of teacher. Now, what kind of teaching is this? This is what I sometimes do at conferences. But I've also done this in the classroom. I usually get my students to do this. I get them up there and working. Is that Vicky? Okay. Um, 
what kind of teacher is this? Is this what you would like to do? Okay, so what kind of teaching is this? If this is a teacher, it's frontal teaching. But if this is a student, then it's active learning through teaching. But it's definitely face-to-face, -face, Carl. That's right. It's teacher-centered, or if it's a student, then it's active learning. Now, have you taught this way before? Just give me a thumbs up if you've taught this way in a computer lab. Computer-assisted language learning. That's what they used to call it. Okay, there isn't a teacher around. Okay, the students are learning on their own. You haven't had the facility. I don't think you're missing very much, Carl, but it's definitely face-to-face -face and there's no teacher. What about this? See those hands? They're very engaged. Very, very engaged. It's face-to-face. -face. We don't see the students but they see the teacher's face. It's also face to face. Okay, so what mountain do you want to climb? What kind of teaching would you like to give? Okay, something to think about until next time. Um, those of you who haven't joined, uh, you're invited to join the Moodle MOOC. It's the first of its kind ever. Okay, the Moodle MOOC, and all you need to do is Google, actually, uh, Moodle MOOC. You're going to get your assignments from the Moodle MOOC, so you're going to have plenty of work. Anybody have the uh, link at hand? I don't know what's the matter with my computer. <laughs> Uh, it must be tired. Okay, I found it. Here it is. There is the Moodle MOOC. There's going to be plenty of work for a whole month, and you might find it interesting. It's not only about Moodle. In fact, it's more about connectivism, connecting for learning. Uh, mostly educators, teachers, instructors from higher education, K-12, and so on, from around the globe. Trust me, I've seen the participants. They're almost 800 now. They're from around the globe, everywhere. So you'll have a chance to meet um, lots of um, new teachers, work together. So there it is. Well, Carl, that'll come. You will get paid. You will get paid. And you're doing a wonderful job. The assignment you'll get in the course, for those who are in the course and those who are not, are invited to uh, join the course. So I'd like to thank you and wish you a wonderful weekend. and to think about, think about what it means for you to teach and view it as a life path. What is your life path? Okay, what would you like out of life? Because teaching is all about that. Okay, so thank you very much and uh, see you online. Bye for now.